what we've been doing is we have two ways of getting the raw material one is just to get it from the farmers who are growing we buy from them the next one is that we contract farmers to grow the material specifically for us on the qualities that we need that we do with the help of Kenya seed which produces the seed we have the seed quality can vary with an oil content of between 22% to 39% all depending on the quality and the zone it is grown so we have to factor that and uh, once we get the seed we have again to take it through a process first we sieve it to ensure it has no stones it has no nails and also all the dirt is removed from sieving, it is taken to fast oil press. From the fast oil press, which removes about 60%, we move to the second press, which removes the remaining 40%. Then from there, we take it to the filtering unit, where it is filtered. After filtering, it gets to the refinery tank. And then from refining, where we remove the acid, we deacidify and then we remove the gums from the oil and from that we go to breaching which removes the color the chlorophyll and also any poisonous substances from breaching it goes to, deodor to deodorization deodorization is the one that clears any taste and any bad odors and the oil is also built to a temperature of around 240 degrees meaning that there is no harmful bacteria that can exist in it. After we take it through deodorization, it is, it is uh, through and it has a storage period of two years. Part of the reason why I'm doing this is that uh, professionally I'm an agricultural engineer and I have been involved 
of about 40 years of running engineering systems in both primary production and in processing. And that is why I believe I stand the best chance in the processing of agricultural products. And that could be what differentiates me from the rest, because they are just doing business. But professional it is in me. The future plan is to expand this. Right now we are doing 300, uh, 300 kilos per day. We intend to raise it to about 10 tons per day as we move on. And we also have to we'll diversify into feed production. As I'm a professional man in terms of agriculture, I would want the farmers to have good quality feed, not to suffer the same fate I used to suffer. Maybe one of the biggest challenges, as I can say, is obtaining raw materials. We have guarded against that by contracting farmers to grow sunflower for us. The next biggest challenge that we have is that we have a problem of power fluctuation. In our system, we have had to put in face failures because we've had motors blowing because the power does not sustain the faces. So it goes suddenly and the machine blows. We've, we've put in face failures and probably the future is we are going to put in also a standby generator. In case of power failure, we are able to continue. What we are operating on is about half an acre is two quarters those two quarters have the factory we have the chicken enterprise which probably goes up to a thousand and two hundred chicken we've got cows currently they are about five and we expect them to increase to that level so land should not really be limited because you can utilize land to do so much without waste. As I said, we are going to expand into probably 10 tons. We have got a supplementary area which we will move for that. And we are also working with the county government. They are saying probably I will need to move the factory to the industrial zone. We started this business way back in 2002 on a very small scale oil press of about 60 kilograms per hour. But that time we were engaged, I we was on job, and I couldn't manage to concentrate in sourcing the raw materials, in uh, marketing the product. So the progress was very little. Late last year, I retired as the technical manager engineering for Agricultural Development Corporation. And I decided now to go into full-time refining. We upped the scale. We've made a capacity of about 300 liters per day. We have the oil presses, which do that in two stages. After pressing the oil, we take it through oil refining. From oil refining, which is, which is right on the background, we take it through breaching and then deodorizing and finally to packaging. This plant is able to do 300 liters per day. The investors, what I would advise them, at an early stage, just look for some place. It doesn't have to be what you call a town. This place, when we came here, it was a forest. And over the years, the town has actually come to us. So just look for a simple place, a cheap place, leave it, try it, to develop within your years when you are working and you will manage to get capital to develop. If you cannot manage land, then at the same time, you can still hire land and operate. But the best thing is where you are able to get your land. And most of the young men, you will find their fathers have some land. So they can set up something within their land and continue moving. I have uh, I've had a, a lot of uh, oh, okay passion yeah, actually in uh, especially in poultry 
that has been my passion for a long time. So I was doing extension actually in the Ministry of Agriculture, was in the Ministry for quite some time. So and uh, I've had uh, a lot of passion in, in poultry because uh, that is one of the cheapest enterprises that uh, most women and even young 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 youth the youth can uh, engage in because it doesn't require a lot of capital.